in this module we'll be seeing the signs of lung consolidation this x-ray shows you the finding which you expect in a patient with right upper lobe consolidation now we know that in the chest x-ray which is a two dimensional uh, image the middle lobe is between the fourth rib anterior margin of the fourth rib and the anterior margin of the sixth rib so middle lobe is somewhere located here right so this is the place you will get the middle lobe all the remaining region what you see is predominantly the upper lobe so this area is entire the upper lobe now in the x-ray what you are actually seeing is there is a non homogeneous opacity which is seen in the lower half of the right upper lobe so you can see that this part is relatively clear so this part appears to be relatively clear if i draw from the middle so this part appears to be relatively clear but this part is fully dense now this is a non homogeneous because this is homogeneous what you see is homogeneous so here you are able to see small black spaces inside so that could indicate the air bronchogram so i think you can put it as a consolidation of the right upper lobe whether the lower lobe uh, apical segment is affected or not we will know only when the lateral chest x ray is taken so for all practical purposes we will put it as a consolidation of the right upper lobe so now having this image in mind we will see what corresponding finding you will get in inspection palpation percussion and auscultation so the bony environment of the lung will not be affected due to consolidation so the shape of the chest will be normal and the it will be symmetrical so the lung lesion will have no effect on the shape of the chest and symmetry of the chest simply because it is an acute lesion the symptom they present with uh, a duration usually less than 10 days and uh, sternal abnormality you need to check just as a part of the usual steps in examination because we know that mediastinal position can be altered by both sternal deformity and spinal deformity in contrary to fibrosis in fibrosis i told that fibrosis can lead on to what is called a secondary scoliosis now that secondary scoliosis or lateral bending does not occur with consolidation so bony environment of the lung you need to check for the sake of checking the mediastinum by the lesion per se does not alter the bony cage of the lung now consolidation does not cause change in the mediastinal portion so the trachea will be in midline and the apical impulse will be on the left fifth space an inch medial to the mid clavicular line so no displacement of the mediastinum will occur in consolidation now volume status of the lung will also be unaffected so you won't have the drooping there won't be any supraclavicular changes in the form of hollowing or fullness no winging of the scapula no change in the intercostal space so the volume status of the lung will not be altered in consolidation of the lung now chest expansion it depends on the extent of involvement we saw that in the x-ray the entire right upper lobe is not affected only the lower part of the right upper lobe is affected so in this case so here i think if i put the lesion here so somewhere here only the lesion was there so since the other part of the lung was appear to be normal in this case chest expansion could be normal on the other hand if the entire right upper lobe is affected or if the entire right lung is affected then it can affect the chest expansion so uh, in the x ray i showed you it look more like a partly consolidated right upper lobe so that may not have an effect on the chest expansion so chest expansion and lung consolidation depends on the amount of volume of the lung which is involved 
is it a single lobe or is it the entire lung that decides the thing again middle lobe consolidation being a very small volume it may not have much impact on the chest expansion so chest expansion can be normal or it can be decreased in lung consolidation and chest wall is expected to be normal until unless the consolidation is complicated by empyema sometimes it happens necrotizing pneumonia occurs that is complicated by empyema then you can get this erythematous thing but in the x-ray what we saw what we saw in the patient's x-ray you don't expect a skin finding in that patient because it's only a part consolidation and the pleural space appears to be completely free now chest expansion posterior when you see again the same thing here i think it was right upper lobe partly so it is somewhere here so the right upper lobe is somewhere here okay so all these are lower lobe from the from the d2 spine it is lower lobe so very small location again the lung is not affected so in this case the posterior chest expansion is likely to be normal in this patient and again the posterior chest expansion gets affected only when the lower lobe is affected so we know that the lower lobe is like this so if the lower lobe is affected significantly then the chest expansion is affected when you see from posterior otherwise usually chest expansion is not that much affected in lung consolidation affecting the upper lobe alone tactile vocal fimitus we all know that it is a test which assesses the filtration function of the lung so in in uh, consolidation the lung is actually like a liver we call it as hepatization so lung becomes like a liver so what happens whatever sound which is produced at the trachea so when you say one one it actually produces two set of frequencies a high frequency and a low frequency so in this case what happens usually the low frequency gets filtered before it reaches the surface of the chest wall in normal healthy lung here the lung will not be able to filter so it all the frequency reaches the chest wall and the tactile vocal fimitus will be increased so as the vocal resonance so as i told you in early fibrosis you may have an increase in the vocal fimitus and vocal resonance in advanced fibrosis it may be decreased whereas in consolidation what you need to remember is that tactile vocal fimitus and vocal resonance may be increased likely to be increased in this our patient also may be in this area so in the right side we saw so when you are going to check it in this area you expect the tactile vocal fimitus to be increased now percussion this is the area what we saw so that corresponds to somewhere this location so when you percuss in this patient the supraclavicular region is likely to be resonant the infraclavicular region is likely to be resonant whereas the mammary region is likely to be dull or impaired okay so that is what you expect in the anterior chest percussion lateral chest, per chest percussion this patient on the right side it is a very small area so we know that the 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 first two intercostal space may be resonant because axilla upper part is likely to be resonant whereas the lower part of the axilla that is the third and the fourth intercostal space is likely to be impaired or dull on the right side okay this image shows left uh, on the on the left side but in our x ray it was on the right side so the lower part of the axilla is likely to be dull or impaired whereas the infra axillary region is likely to be resonant in our case posterior part i already told you the the back of the person is predominantly dominated by the lower lobe and moreover it is only a part consolidation of the upper lobe so the posterior percussion the entire posterior chest percussion in our case is expected to be resonant because the affected lung is not accessible from the posterior aspect now coming to breath sounds the breath sounds may be decreased when the consolidation places breath sound may be decreased so normal breath sounds may be decreased so that's the first thing is possible there 
you may have a bronchial breathing because they told you bronchial breathing is very much similar to what you get in increased vocal resonance the um, actually the basically the lung will fail to filter the uh, all the uh, sound which is produced or the breath sound which is produced therefore you will get a characteristic inspiratory phase and an extended expiratory phase which is small pause you may get what is called a tubular breathing but bronchial breathing may be present or sometimes you will only get a decrease in the breath sounds and it may be more or less vesicular more or less vesicular but you may have added sounds so one possibility is the decrease in the breath sounds and just a vesicular sound no bronchial breathing or they may be bronchial breathing and you may have a added sounds along with it so two possibility is there so what what are the things you may so here i think depending on what finding you may have okay so you may have a decrease in the vesicular breath sound will be heard but the intensity will be decreased plus you may have crackles there or you may have bronchial breathing and you may have a crackle in that location so these are the possibility you may get in the x ray which i had shown you so what we have seen breath sounds i told so it breath sounds may be decreased over the region or you may have bronchial breathing or sometimes breath sounds may be normal bronchial breathing also may be absent but vocal resonance may be increased okay so isolated increase in the vocal resonance is also possible early early consolidation all what you will have will be increase in the vocal resonance and presence of crackles so here here the basically the crackles is due to secretions which pools in the uh, airway as well as in the alveoli and therefore the crackles are expected to be coarse okay so the crackles what you hear you expect it to be coarse so that is also possible so auscultation wise what i can tell is that you may either have a increase in the vocal resonance with only only coarse crackles or you may have a increase in the vocal resonance as well as decrease in the breath sounds and coarse crackles or you may have a bronchial breathing increase vocal resonance and also a coarse crackles so these are the combination you may get so the, the focal crackles alone could uh, could be the finding in that is the message what i want to tell you focal crackles with increased vocal resonance could be the only finding auscultatory finding in lung consolidation that is fully possible now i want to tell one important uh, classical sign which is described in lung consolidation called egophony and whispering pectrolochi this is still relevant today because you can actually appreciate it in the some of the patients so basically what happens this is actually a type of a vocal resonance mechanism only ask the patient to tell e so usually we ask the patient to ask the tell ni or ti depending on the language what the patient tells so whatever language the patient speaks ask them to tell a word which ends with ni don't ask to tell e okay tell something like ni or ti or gi something like that now what you will hear is ye so when the patient tells ni you will hear it as nie 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 patient will be telling ni but when you hear through the mouth you will hear it as ni but when you actually um, Uh, hear it through the chest wall you will hear it as nie 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 so it is equivalent to the bleating of the goat okay bleating of the goat that is what we call it as a um, uh, egophone so the mechanism here is very simple the filtration gets modified so that is what i am trying to tell so when you auscultate sometimes in patients with uh, Uh, lung consolidation when you compare the vocal resonance itself you will have a clue whether this patient has egophony because you will hear the sound little different the character of the uh, one one which the patient tells will be different on the surface of the chest that's a clue that the may be patient may have egophony basically it is a terminal change in the um, uh, frequency of the 
sound which is produced causing e to a so basically it is e becoming a a a a so that is called egophony very common thing even nowadays if you see in the bedside you'll be able to appreciate it whispering petrolochi uses a similar concept here the patient is asked to whisper so you can use something equivalent to whispering you can ask the patient to tell uh, something like something like hissing of the snake so when the patient gives a hissing uh, sound uh, orally that will be heard through the chest wall you will be able to hear the hissing sound in the uh, on the chest face of the chest wall that is whispering petrolochi now bronchophony is nothing but you are you will be able to appreciate the sound produced as in the trachea so i think you can skip the bronchophony just remember egophony which is whispering petrolochi which is possible in our case in our case patient may have egophony whispering petrolochi a very good sign of consolidation which is still valid in current modern day clinical practice so you have would have seen the signs of lung consolidation and having already seen the fibrosis i think you will be in a better position to differentiate both consolidation and fibrosis the basic point is fibrosis causes mediastinal shift whereas consolidation does not cause a mediastinal shift fibrosis causes volume loss consolidation does not cause a volume loss rest are may be little similar in certain areas it may be different in certain areas but the main point you should look in the difference is lack of mediastinal shift in consolidation and lack of volume loss in consolidation